based on the theme of night time. So ladies and gentlemen, the opening chorus from the village show.
crowd to our show here tonight. And I'm glad to see you have such a large crowd. And we hope to provide you with some fine entertainment, the music, song, dance, and comedy, and maybe a few other things thrown in. We hope you will give the performance your full attention. They put a lot of hard work into this show, and we would like you to pay attention to them anyway. Now, before we proceed any further, we have been asked by the local gun club if we would encourage members to join. And they feel that a lot of people around the area are not familiar with the anatomy of the fall that are being shot. So they have asked us if, they would, if we would allow a veterinary surgeon to come on and give a brief description of the anatomy of the fowl. Now we've given him just one minute, so he's going to be on very brief. So I'd like to ask you to give your attention, please, to Dr. Humphrey Moriarty. Thank you.
Chinese temple. So, <laughs> thinking down there in the audience, I know it's a religion of what, but it reminds me of a little joke I have about three people, Kelly Templin, Tommy Gilligan, and Eamon Collins, and the three of them happened to die in the same day. And unfortunately for them, they were sent downstairs instead of upstairs. But anyway, the three of them arrived below together, and they were put into three separate rooms of their own. And Jerry was in his room alone, and the next thing the door opened, and this old hag of a woman came in, and she was all worked, and she was about 150, but she was a day. And this loud voice came over and said, Jerry Cantillon, for your sins on earth, you must spend all eternity with this woman. So that was all right. Tom McGilly gets the door open. And an even worse looking one came in. And she was awful all together. And the same voice was just to say, Tom McGilligan, for your sins on earth, you must spend all eternity with this woman. That left Eamon. What was going to happen to him? Well, his door opened, and this beautiful girl came in, Raquel Welch. You all know Raquel Welch. And she was dressed to kill, absolutely gorgeous altogether. And the next thing, the voice was coming over again, Raquel Welch, for your sins on earth. It was the darling for the day. I don't think this true aim and what all that works. Now, ladies and gentlemen, as you know, Ireland is renowned for its tourist industry, but from time to time, we do get complaints. And our next scene is set in a board father office where two Americans have some complaints to make, and they are coming into the office to make that complaint, but they have a slight problem. The man they meet is the office manager, and he is okay, but he has an assistant, and unfortunately, his assistant only speaks Irish. So this is what happens when they run into a language problem. Ladies and gentlemen, the board falls a sketch.
a compliment then. Well, not exactly. He was speaking about the weather. He wasn't? Oh, shit. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Me hon, not another word. Penny who? 
Paddy, dearie. Paddy, dearie. Good man, Paddy. Now, Paddy, you have two minutes to answer all these questions, and you have a score of 80 to beat. And each question is worth five points. I know, I know. So, are you ready? Yeah. Right. Two subjects are the Bible and general knowledge. First question What was the first mention of television in the Bible? Come on, Penny. In the Bible? Would it be when our last walk to Moses out of the bush? Correct. <laughs> now, tell me, Penny, what do you know? We're still on the Bible. Still on the Bible. What do you know about Damascus? Damascus? Have it? Is that the stuff to kill 99% of all known germs? That's correct, Penny. Correct again. <laughs> now, Penny, this is a difficult one. This is a general knowledge one. If you saw something old and brown on the piano stool, what would it be? I think now you better repeat that question again. If you saw something old and brown on the piano stool, what would it be? Have it? Couldn't be Beethoven's last moment. I tell you, you're in right forum tonight. I know, I know. Now your next question, back to the Bible. What was the first mention of elastic in the Bible? Would it be when Moses tied his ass to a tree and walked by my to Jericho? Very good, very, very good. I, I give you that. It's not exactly what I had here, but I give you that one. Now, Penny, this is another Bible question. Can you tell me anything about the epistles? Ah, uh, that's not what I heard, you Would they be the wives of the apostles? <laughs> I'm sorry, Penny, I can't give you that one. They were letters written by the apostles. Uh -oh. Now, Penny, we're still on the Bible. How did God make the world in six days? <laughs> He was a bit light. Very good. <laughs> more than I could do it. More productivity. <laughs> now, Penny, if you general knowledge question, you are going great guns. What is an ascot? Come on, Penny, we can't be waiting for you. Would it be a, a cup for a small donkey? Very good. On the ball again. <laughs> Now, tell me, what is the significance of one continuous white line on the road? You can't cross over it all? Correct. And can you tell me what is the significance of a double continuous white line on the road? You can't cross over it all, 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 all. Very good, Penny. Now, what was Gandhi's Christian name? This is a difficult one now. Gandhi's Christian name. His first name, right? That's right, Penny. I have it. Goosey, goosey. <laughs> Sorry, Penny, I can't give you that one. Next question. What was the first mention of a high jump in the Bible? Would it be good? Good. With all that, he had a temple. Very good, Penny. We'll give you that one. Now, Penny, your last question. You have 80 marks, your time for the lead, and you have to answer this question in order to win out the trophy outright. Think and listen carefully now. What goes green? I start this so I finish. What goes green, red, amber, green, red, amber? Come on, Penny. 
We haven't all night. The bed is gone. Yeah. I don't think he has it, ladies and gentlemen. Could it be a, a packet of four plus days? Very good, very good, very good. And ladies and gentlemen, we have a winner. Teddy is the winner. Could we have his trophy, please? Teddy, this is your prize for winning tonight. Would you please stand up and collect your trophy? Continue <laughs> the show with a song from Teddy Buckley and Linda McGilligan on the music. Thank you. Thank you. 
Now we have two local ladies who happen to find themselves out in the corridor sitting side by side because space is so scarce. So ladies and gentlemen, the county hospital madam for the hospital scene. Please. 
And Mrs. Murphy, do you know what she said to me? Mrs. Murphy, do you know what she said to me? I said, Mr. I, could I have a pair of wall knickers, please? Do you want legs in them, she said to me? Well, I'm sure to God, said I, tin sleeves that I want to know. Oh, Mrs. Bird, I must take your blood. Hold <laughs> oh, that now, Mrs. Bird, in your hands. And if you have blood pressure, it will show on it. If you're expecting blood pressure, it will show on it. <laughs> Anything you're expecting to show on it. Well, I make sure I hope it's working so. You sleep up a small bit on the support. Now, New York is that? It is the first time it has been inside an hospital door, girl. And it is accurate to the very last thing. Whatever you do now, Mrs. Bird, watch the radio up there. And if the higher up it goes, the higher the blood pressure rang up there. You're consoling. Mrs. Bird, I'm going to Mrs. Bird now. <laughs>
best we can. Right. Let's relax a minute though.
Not very much of it because we're not sure how we will enjoy it. So we're going to have a, a short scene from the Nutcracker Suite performed by the Tommy McGilligan Ballet Group. Thank you.
When Irish men are proud and glad of the land where they were born. Oh, thought I see, and memories fill of far off years gone by. When being just a lad like you, I join the IRA. Fitzpatrick together. <laughs> <laughs> May I have a smile again? What's your name? 
four thrive you to give it away. Or join colonies and more in bush land. They wouldn't throw into a conversation any idea too. <laughs> well, you can't be saying anything now, you know, you're Well, go look enough. Do you know who we'll have tomorrow? Who's that? You should be practicing your songs. Why so? Mary and I didn't want it. I can't sing it all. Did you call anyone else? I did, I did. Around dinner time, I was at Morgan Madden's. I thought I'd get a great meal. You know what they mean now that Bridget uh, organized for the community college. It was fantastic to us. But you know I called? The tour day, mother and bed. Well now, Father, would you like to tell me, what would you like to gain out of this mission? <laughs> well, I suppose I'd say that I'm in the PP, it needs to be abstract. If I can get on with the PP, I'd like to see more often than what I'm seeing today, anyway, thank God. And the things I'd like for the plant yourself now is, I'd like to see Terry Cantillon, and when he stalks me, hang from as I rose from the mountain. <laughs> yes, yes, carry on, carry on. And I wouldn't mind our special arena. Mike Murphy, I'm going to sort of go to the Emma Collins. No, I didn't hope we'd give us a day when we get married. <laughs> and I don't see Chum Wagon and Jordan Murphy in the fire. <laughs> and then I'd like to see Joan Reagan give us more of a little hand at the flowers. Because, honest to God, she doesn't know if they're doing flowers at all. And Kathleen Collins, if she might get out that seat, with the radius and the side eyes, she stopped that morning on the night. <laughs> Well, Father, do you know something? You did a great job in the house. I did now. I should not forget what they should make me. Would you? I will have a credit and Mary and Danny would be for a whole week. They made a great job. But about Sean, no. He's a fierce man. He's a fierce eye for the flowers. He made a great job in the valley clean. But you don't mind your margarine or salon and stuff when you go up and see all the flowers. <laughs> no, Father, I think I'll pop off the bed. Would you have pajamas? I'm not fitting me right. <laughs> well, never a bit of a miss, but all right. Because Mary Ann gave it to me. But I'm going to have a camera about myself with Jimmy Callahan, so I'll see what happens then. Right, Father. Good night. God bless. And our next spot is a solo singing from Colin Colgan. Give a big round of applause now, please. It's 
sa hukap. <laughs> do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yeah, I do, I do, I do. Carry on, carry on. Last Thursday, as a result of a complaint, I charged the defendant of carnal knowledge on the one goblet Drumpton in the back row of the city cinema. Any questions? Take it. 
stone and read it where? Well, well, my lad. I've read it, your reverence. You may say it out loud. Out loud, my lad. Out loud, made in Hong Kong. <laughs> I think now we'd better hurry up with this case. Now, my good man, what have you got to say in your defense? I want to pin. <laughs>
knew it. You could bet your sweet life I'd never go through it. Show me hospitality of Rome with the great preparation. You swear to the meeting of the United Nations. There was cleaning of windows, painting of doors, scouring of saucepans, and scrubbing of floors. And the scattering of cobwebs with the spoils in tears, should they have been disturbed for the past seven years. And the wife is amazing. Oh, Jesus is a terror. And now all the three quarters in front of the mirror. She was practicing postures, perfecting poses, and I had to spray her with the oil of roses. And then they began to arrive. Oh, Jenny, malaria. I thought the missus would have a canary. But I did the flyby and stayed out of the way. But I kept only a cop just to hear what they'd say. Oh, Mary, your corpses are really quite nice. I'm sure they're the best you would get from the prize. But my lady Joe would never allow me to buy such cheap things, says Mary Collins, as she waggling her lucky bag earrings. <laughs> oh, what a nice little sideboard. Of course it is plywood. Now, mine is antique, genuine rosewood. Well, you should hear collect. And she'd blow in her horn, and she would know the difference between rosewood and a bush of white horns. <laughs> and then, Rita McGilligan began, and the things she did say about Mary Jude and John Buckley being on the family way. <laughs> and such things as were drawn down in front of the wife, well, the poor innocent creature was ashamed of her life. Well, the end of the story is that after that night, the whole house was full of plastic, moats, jokes, pots, softens, and pens. So take my advice. Live long, be happy, but whatever you do, beware of a Tupperware party. Thank you. I have different signals that I have in back behind the curtain, so I'm not sure whether they're ready or not. But I have no more to say to you all, except thank you for being a very good audience. Thank you for coming, and I would like to make an appeal to you before I go to please give the next group on stage the attention and the quietness that you give our performance, because it is very difficult for people on stage to perform if they are being interrupted with talking and laughing, and particularly I would ask the children not to be throwing bottles and kicking bottles around the floor. Give them your best attention, and once again, Thank you very much indeed, ladies and gentlemen. And now it's the final floor. Thank you. Oh!